Now, the final topic in uh, turn-based retrieval is BM25. So far, we've seen uh, two types of document representations, uh, vector-based and distribution-based. Now, BM25 is neither. It's just an empirically found method that works well for many collections. And that's why uh, I'll tell you about that. That's why you'll implement it in the assignments. And um, that's a very good example of how IR differs from many other disciplines, for example, machine learning, where you can usually build a nice theory and also it will be good in practice. If you can prove it's good, it's good. Not, not always, but in many cases. In information retrieval, it all goes the other way around. You come up with something, you evaluate it, and you see that it works well. That's why, again, we started with teaching you evaluation methods, not the core ranking techniques, but evaluation. And if it works well, maybe you will be able to find with a reasonable explanation for that, or maybe not. So far, there were many attempts to explain BM25, and uh, none of them really did. So IR is very empirical uh, and uh, well, that's some, some sort of beauty of it. So the, the best uh, illustration of BM25 is not vectors, is not distributions, it's just the formula of BM25. And this huge thing is called BM25. I'll walk you through it uh, in a moment, but before that, I want to tell you uh, the story behind BM25 that I think is very nice and actually representative of how things work in information retrieval. Again, in offline on on-campus lectures, I, I usually ask a question, what BM25 stands for? What BM means and what 25 means? And um, we have a little bit of discussion. We can arrive to the conclusion that BM is something like best match, uh, which is a not natural Thing to say about a good ranking function, best match, and what is 25? And 25 is the 25th attempt of the authors to make a good ranking function. So they made at least 25 trials, maybe even more than that. So they tried different combinations of these quantities here, of TFs, DFs, document length, and the 25th worked better than others. So it's stick around, and now we know it as BM25. So imagine how much work it uh, needed. And again, uh, this can't really be explained apart from one thing. This, you probably noticed already, this is just IDF. Nothing else but IDF. The summation of over query terms we've seen before, especially if you uh, think about language models, there we had product, but if you go to the log scale, then you immediately go into summation of a query term. So this we've seen in the language models, this is IDF. Now this thing is just completely empirical. Now K1 and B are parameters. They're also in different variations. There are K3, K5, K different parameters, but K1 controls the effect of TF and B controls the effect of document length. And uh, yeah, this is document length clearly. And this important quantity is document length averaged over do all documents, so, so that this is from zero to one. Now let's uh, have a look a little bit closer to into this formula. Uh, so let's look at K1, for example. What if K1 is zero? Then this goes away, and then TF cancels, obviously, because there's nothing in the denominator. And then what do we have? We just have the summation of IDFs. That's a reasonable ranking function. Sometimes you can just sum over IDFs. The bad thing is, of course, you don't have any TF there. So basically, if a word occurs many times in document, that doesn't change anything. So this is more like a binary thing, whether a term occurs in a document or not. Well, actually, even there's nothing about term occurrences in documents at all. It's just document frequencies. Now, if K1 goes to infinity, then uh, this just disappears because that becomes close to infinity. And then uh, K1 just cancels out because, well, basically this goes to infinity, this goes to infinity, cancels out and it's just TF. So basically then it's TF IDF. 
it's the sum of t upside ifs. It's not exactly vector space model because there we had cosine similarity, but it, it's a summation over recurrent terms of IDF multiplied by TF. So it's not a, such a weird thing after all, if you start thinking about this formula and how people derive to it. Now, what if B uh, zero or one? B just controls the effect of document length. So if B is zero, no uh, document length is present, no normalization is present. Uh, and uh, that's not fair usually because long documents will be preferred over short documents because term frequency for long documents is higher just by default. If you compare a book to a news article, clearly TFs in a book will be much larger. So B0 means no uh, normalization by document length. And by the way, in TF IDF and vector space model, no normalization was needed just because in the cosine similarity, the document length would cancel anyway. But here, there's uh, no way, uh, no other way to incorporate that document length, but to put it into the denominator. And if B is uh, one, then uh, document length has full effect. Basically, this uh, goes away and this has full effect. And uh, it's also interesting to think about TFs because TFs can be small, can be large. If TF is small, then it, uh, well, relatively small, of course, it does affect uh, the ranking in a certain way. If TF is large, actually, if it goes to infinity, again, this disappears because this is just too small and this is infinity, this is infinity, these two things cancel out. So for documents with very large TFs, essentially the ranking becomes again, based on IDFs. So that's the reason basically by putting, uh, for putting TF in the denominator because at first sight, TF in the denominator seems like a weird concept. TF should be in the uh, numerator. The larger the TF is, the better the document is. But if TF is too large, we need to compensate for that. And that's why we put TF in the uh, denominator. So you see, in the end, this formula does make sense, but there's no way you can arrive to it uh, theoretically. Uh, so, but, but yeah, this is one of the best working methods, by the way, just for you to know. And uh, these are the standard values of parameters, but of course you can tune them. And one final thing I want to say about uh, BM25 is, well, probably it helps you to understand better this uh, formula and maybe come up with your own variations in your own applications. Sometimes queries are long. And for example, in patent search, you can submit the whole patent as a query. In that case, your query will be as long as the document. And to compensate for that, to, to normalize TFs for that, uh, you can add this part here, term frequency for terms in a query. Again, if TF in a query is too high, this cancel that, cancels out. So as I said, there are other constants sometimes. And uh, yeah, this is the idea. You can try to apply this idea to, to other applications as well. And I want to show a little bit of comparison. So I've been talking about uh, different methods, vector space models. BM25 is the first row here. Language models, uh, Jelinek, Mercy, Smoothen, second row, and Dirichlet, Smoothen, third row. Now the last two rows just um, drop them. Let's have a look at the first three rows. Uh, there is no vector space model with TF-IDF because it's usually the worst method. Although in your assignment, it may not be. Just check it. Now, this is one of the track collections. Uh, you've heard a little bit about that during evaluation lectures. Uh, 50 queries, so this is just the setup. It's not that important. You can double check this um, paper here. And since this paper is obviously about language models for IR, Naturally, uh, you see that language models perform pretty well, but uh, some other studies may, on other collections may actually show that BM25 performs better. So here you see that Dirichlet Smoothen seems to perform a little bit better in terms of MAP, although the p-value for statistical significance is not that low. So actually, if you take a look at the p-values, the difference between BM25 and Dirichlet Smoothen is not statistically significant. So basically the first and third rows are pretty much similar. And uh, yeah, and same for, for genetic mercy, there's no statistical significance difference. 
basically all three methods work more or less the same. And on a different collection, this is web. Now this is about news articles uh, from 80s and 90s. This is the web data. For the web data, apparently there's the significance difference for MEP. Dirichlet smoothen is a little bit better than IBM 25, but according to our precision and precision 10, there's no significant difference. While uh, genetic mercy smoothen is significantly worse than BM25. So this is much worse than BM25, this and this as well. So basically, again, Dirichlet smoothen and BM25 are pretty good uh, according to this experimental setup. As I said, in your assignment, in your experimental setup, that may be completely different. That's why, again, evaluation is super important. We always start with evaluation. And when uh, people ask me, like, what would you recommend using? Is it uh, topic models or BM25 or learning to rank? There's no specific answer to that. There's no theory that proves anything. There's just, okay, try it, evaluate it on your specific collection and use the best method. Because on different, in different scenarios, different collections, different queries, it all may be different. Even worse, uh, different assessors may give you different judgments as you heard from Evangelos. And if you use different assessors, these results may change. So that's, that's how uh, information retrieval works. So to summarize term-based retrieval and the first part of document representation mentioned, because we will have a second part. We talked about the vector space model where we represent documents and queries as vectors and we match them using cosine similarity. We talked about language modeling for IR where we represented documents and queries as distributions and matched using a query likelihood model or Kullback likelihood divergence. And we also talked about BM25, which is neither document nor distribution based representation. This is just a well working method. You can read uh, these two books on these topics. And the next set of videos will be about semantic approaches to ranking and to matching.